Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Uh, lesson, my name is Stephen Kariungi. We are going to continue with what uh, we are learning about Kingdom Fungi. Uh, last lesson, uh, we learned about the examples of Kingdom Fungi. We saw examples such as rhizopus mold. We saw examples such as mushrooms, yeast. All those are examples of fungi. We also went on to look at the characteristics of the kingdom fungi. And the first characteristic we saw was that uh, a fungus is made of a basic functional unit that is called a hypha, whose plural is hyphae. So today we shall continue with the characteristics of kingdom fungi. Welcome. So we are going to go to characteristic number two. Kingdom fungi characteristics. So our number two characteristic is that fungi are eukaryotic. Eukaryotic is the term that we saw when you are learning kingdom protoctista, the earlier kingdom. So we say that the word eukaryotic means that has a nuclear membrane. So even the members of kingdom fungi, they have a nuclear membrane and therefore they are eukaryotic. Eukaryotic. So the word eukaryotic means that uh, the fungi have a nuclear membrane that nuclear membrane encloses the nucleus. Now, the next characteristic is that uh, the fungi also have a cell wall, but unlike the plant cells where the cell wall is made of cellulose, in fungi, the cell wall is made of a substance that is known as chitin is known as chitin. So they have a cell wall made of, made of chitin. So the cell wall in fungi is made of chitin. Now characteristic number four is that if you observe things like the mushrooms, some are brown, some are cream, some are white. You find that the fungi, they lack chlorophyll. They do not have chlorophyll like the plant cells. So for that, they cannot carry out photosynthesis. So the fungi lack chlorophyll. That means they are not green and therefore, i.e. cannot carry out, cannot carry out photosynthesis. They cannot make their own food. So in other words, that explains why most of the fungi, you'll find them growing on bread, on food, because they cannot make their own, yeah, they cannot make their own food. Another characteristic of kingdom fungi is that they have rhizoids. Rhizoids resemble the roots, like the roots of plants. But for these ones, we don't call them roots. We call them rhizoids. They have rhizoids for one, anchorage. Anchorage is support, uh, so that they can support themselves onto the substrate. They are growing on something, so they are able to support themselves using the rhizoids. Number two, Rhizoids also help in absorption, absorption of nutrients, absorption of nutrients and water, and water from the substrate. They are able to absorb water and also nutrients from the substrate. So basically uh, that is a, a fundamental feature of, uh, of the kingdom fungi. Now, 
The other thing that uh, is also worth to note is in terms of their mode of reproduction. How do they reproduce? So characteristic number six is that uh, uh, most fungi reproduce asexually. So no gametes. So we can say that most fungi reproduce asexually uh, without the use of gametes. Uh, asexually through a process through a process called sporulation. Sporulation means spore formation. They form spores. So that process by which they reproduce, they reproduce by uh, formation of spores is called sporulation. However, it's also good to know that we have a few, we have a few fungi that reproduce sexually. Yeah? We have a few that reproduce sexually, but we are saying that most of them reproduce asexually through spore formation or through sporulation. So we can also mention that under the same point, however, a few, however, a few uh, fungi reproduce sexually through fusion through fusion of hypho hypho cells the cells of the hyphae huh? they can also fuse so when there is a fusion between different cells that is sexual where there is no fusion that is asexual but we are saying that mainly most fungi will reproduce asexually through the process that we are calling spore formation. So the next thing that we are going to look at is the economic importance of fungi. How are the fungi important, especially to man? Economic importance of fungi. Uh, one of the importance uh, we know, uh, for example, we've said that the fungi attack bread or they attack food. So in the process, they make the food to decay. And when the food decays, the food becomes spoiled. So they cause decay, which leads to food spoilage. <coughs> which leads to food spoilage that is one importance another importance of the fungi we have some fungi that are used in medicine yeah there are some medicine or there are some drugs medical drugs that are made from fungi for example there is a certain medicine that is known as penicillin penicillin is a medicine that is made from a fungus that is known as penicillium. So they are used in medicine to make uh, antibiotics, antibiotics, e.g., penicillin. Penicillin from a fungus called penicillium. Penicillium is the fungus that produces penicillin. Penicillin is used as an antibiotic. So basically there are many more uses or there are many more economic uh, importance. You can go through them uh, in due course. So we can have an overview of what we have said today. We have said that uh, members of the kingdom fungi, they have a nuclear membrane, so they are eukaryotic. They have a cell wall made of chitin, that's another characteristic. They do not have, a, uh, they do not have chlorophyll. They are not green. They lack chlorophyll. 
so they cannot carry out photosynthesis. Yeah? In other words, we can say that they are heterotrophic. They have rhizoids, which I said they look like roots for anchorage and also for absorption of nutrients and water from the substrate. And then the final characteristic is that most fungi reproduce asexually through a process called sporulation or spore formation. But we have a few fungi that reproduce sexually through the fusion of hypho cells. A hypho cell and another hypho cell fusing together. So that is sexual. But note, most reproduce asexually. Then finally, we have looked at the economic importance of fungi, where they are apl applied in day-to-day -day life. We've said that uh, they cause uh, decay, and this decay leads to food spoilage. That's why we put foods in refrigerators so that we keep off the fungi. Otherwise, that food will go bad within a short time. Then we have also said that they are used in medicine, especially in the making of antibiotics. We have an antibiotic known as penicillin that is made from a fungus known as penicillium. So that is an, a, a, an important use in the field of medicine. So we'll stop there until the next lesson. So thank you and have a good day. Thank <music> you.